uh, this talk uh, focuses uh, on uh, John of Rupeshista medical alchemy and more generally on the development of medical alchemy in the Occitan Catalan area with an emphasis uh, on the analysis of a partial uh, but significant critical edition of the Pseudolulian alchemical testament, which I prepared for my doctoral dissertation. Um, my work uh, focuses uh, on an extremely important part uh, of the Catalan historical heritage, which is uh, still uh, little studied and consists uh, of medical alchemy. This particular branch of alchemy, also known as alchemy of the elixir, developed uh, for the first time in Western Europe uh, from 12th to 16th century, just in the Occitan Catalan area. In the slide, you can see a map of this Occitan Catalan area. This uh, is the same area um, uh, that uh, was traveled by the troubadours, which uh, show the map uh, shows uh, the cultural and political ties uh, of Occitania with the crown of Aragon, formed in 1137 thanks to the marriage between Ramon Berenguer IV and uh, of Barcelona and uh, Peronella the first of Aragon. The principal research objective of the alchemist in this area was to create an elixir through a pharmacological process that was intended to be a universal medicine which could cure all diseases. The data I have collected on alchemists in the Occitan Catalan area practicing for the queens and the kings of the crown of Aragon, the elites, uh, as well as for their own use and others, reinforces the idea of the existence of a real school of alchemists in the region interested in wellness and health care. Is it, um, it is important to highlight the precocity of the development of alchemy in the Occitan Catalan area and the great social diffusion of this knowledge from the elite to much wider social sectors. Even though uh, the church, particularly in the 14th century with the bull of the Pope John XXII and the treatise of the terrible inquisitor Nicolau Emeric persecuted alchemy, we find in Catalan kings a continuous interest in the art of transmutation. In the period from 1336 to 1406, during the rule of Pere III, uh, the ceremonious Peter, um, and his son, Juan um, IV, the hunter, John, with his consort, uh, consort Violan de Bar, and Martí I, the humanist, with his consort Maria de Luna, demonstrated a strong interest in alchemy. They were cultured and refined king, and Juan um, I shows a very detailed knowledge of alchemy to the point that he said he has seen the bull opus, by which I mean the complete alchemical transformation process several times. Like her sister-in-law, Queen Viola de Bar, Queen Maria de Luna frequently resorted to alchemy, the healing power of hot springs and precious stones, and uh, in addition, I have observed that the kings uh, not only kept abreast of the works uh, and practice of alchemy that uh, took place in their domains, but also sought to apply a system of licenses to allow alchemists to practice and to control them and their discoveries. It is uh, worth uh, nothing that uh, records also uh, show some women um, were also provides, uh, uh, provided licenses. Um, the origin of the alchemist of the Occitan Catalan uh, school that I have been able to detect in my research is primarily Catalan, Occitan or Jewish. The Jewish were often also uh, magician and astrologers. And because of the fact that the most widespread alchemy in the area is the, me is the medical one, uh, we find many alchemists who were also physicians or apothecaries. So 
So the members of the alchemical school of the Occitan Catalan area could also be friars, in particular linked to the reforming movement of the spiritual Franciscan. And between them, the most famous name is John de Rocatagliada in Catalan, better known as John of Rupeshissa. The Franciscan alchemist and monks, according to the model of the founder, Francis of Assisi, studied the love nature and they wished health for the poor. This objective explains their interest in discovering the elixir which aimed to heal those who could not have for physicians or medicines. Rupeshissa was an Occitan Franciscan friar of the most radical denomination of the spirituals who pursued alchemical research for medical and pharmacological purposes. purposes. In addition to this practical aspect, he focused on the transmutation of society, especially working against the corruption of the Roman church as well as the goal of spiritual renewal for society, characterized by a strong utopian and prophetic leaning. The importance of John of Rupeshissa for medical alchemy derived from the fact uh, in his work, uh, Liber de Considerazione Quinta Essentia Omnium Rerum of the 1351 about, um, he produced uh, a fusion between pharmacological distillation, which has a large, large tradition in Catalonia, and the alchemical doctrine of the elixir, identifying the alchemical elixir with the distilled alcohol of wine. This golden wine, or fifth essence, uh, is the product of a procedure similar to that used to obtain alchemical waters. This is one of the reasons for the interest in my postdoctoral work to partially edit the work entitled Libre Secret in Philosophia, Secret Book in Philosophy, of this friar present in the alchemical miscellany. You can see in the slide the incipit of the work that we can read together in Old Catalan with a translation. So, Libre de Juan de Rupa Sisa. Book of John of Rupeshissa. En nom de Nostre Senior Deu, Jesu Christ, commença lo libre secret en filosofia, revelat per los angels de Nostre Senior Deu, als homens evangelicals, demonstrant que la quinta essencia pot ser treta de totes coses transmutables e les gran operacions que es fan de la dita quinta essencia demonstran més per coses miraculoses que naturals, Second, lo magisteri, avanten lo libre, mostrarem. So in the name of our Lord, God of Jesus Christ, begins the secret book in philosophy, revealed by the angels of our Lord God to the an evangelical man. It shows that the fifth testament can be taken from all transmutable things and the great operations that are made of the fifth testament. Uh, said the fifth essence, demonstrating uh, more to do miraculous than natural things, according to the magisterium that we are going to show in this book. It is true that medicinal waters used for medicinal, medicinal purposes were widely used in Occitan Catalan medical culture. To give just a few highlights uh, within the treatise, uh, the Aqua Vitae Simplici et Composita, the Aquis uh, Medicinalibus, and especially the Venus, there is discussion about the golden wine, endowed with very powerful virtues such as preserving youth. These treatises were originally attributed to the Catalan intellectual and physician Arnau de Villanova. Uh, close to the spiritual Franciscans movement, movement too. However, according to the most recent studies, including uh, by Rodriguez Guerrero, for example, these works uh, should in fact be attributed to Per Arnau de Villanova, who was an Occitan Catalan alchemist, physician and surgeon in Montpellier. Evidence shows that in 1341, he was present at the papal court of Avignon, 
he would also potentially uh, be the author of the fourth part of works included in the, in the pseudo Arnaldian alchemical corpus. I wish to also recall the recommendations for the use of these waters in the, in the Cirurgia by the Italian Dominican preacher Theodoric Borgognoni. Uh, the Cirurgia translated into Catalan at the beginning of the 14th century was one of the first translation of medical text in the vulgar language, which was widely disseminated and was nevertheless one of the first texts that refers to the distillation of wine. To conclude, Another pseudo-Lulian text called Ars Operativa Medica also documents the inclusion of waters in the alchemical field. In the incipit of the work, we can find the mention of the city of Lleida, sit since uh, 1300 of a faculty of medicine. This is the quote in Old Catalan with his translation. Quan io, Raimon, encara a Lleida, els amics em van pregar afectuosament que els reveles alguns coneixements secrets de l'art mèdic escrivint un llibre. When I, Raimon, was still in Lleida, my friends begged me uh, affectionately to reveal them some secret, uh, some secret knowledge of the medical art by writing a book. Uh, therefore, recapitula recapitulating the first two arguments, we have retraced uh, different elements that testify the vivacity of the development of medical alchemy in the Occitan Catalan area from the Mid Middle Age to the early Renaissance. For example, we can consider the large number of practicing alchemists who served the elites and others of whom I have found historical documentation. I have spoken of the existence of alchemical texts translated into Catalan or written in the same language. In addition, I have mentioned the alchemical corpus attributed to Ramon Julian to Arnaud de Villanova, which were the most important in the uh, European medio medio medieval West. Moreover, it is interesting to try to understand why Ramon Julian and Arnaud de Villanova have been attracted figures for the attribution of complete alchemical corpus. And we can find a possible explanation in the system of reasoning the most academic uh, consider a heterodox used by them. On one hand, Ramon Yul in his Ars Magna or Ars Magna invented the system of reasoning to manage knowledge without the necessity of knowing the authors and the, the academic works. A kind of mechanic, uh, mechanical logic linked uh, the fundamental concept represented by symbols or letter of the alphabet in order to obtain indications in all field uh, of knowledge. We can see in the slide an example of this. On the other end, we have to think uh, that Arnaud de Villanova proposed a reform to Christianity based on Franciscan spiritual radicalism. Either um, way, uh, it is a fact that the authentic authors of the two corpus, pseudo Lulian and pseudo uh, Arnaldian, came from this geographical area. They wrote their works during the 14th and the 15th centuries here or abroad, as is the case of the pseudo Lui, who composed his alchemical testament in England. I have partially edited this testament for my doctoral dissertation. The pseudo Lui is the authentic author of the alchemical testament, and in the past century, Patai, in 1994, identified him with another master Ramon, Ramon de Tarrega, a Jew who converted to the Dominican order lived in the town of Tarrega in the Catalan region of Urgell. He is especially known for the acts of uh, 1371 directed against him by the inquisitor Nicolau Enric. 
the identification of this uh, Ramon de Tarrega with the pseudo Lui is still disputed, but it is considered possible, at least with regard to the Liberté Secreti Nature Seu de Quinta Essentia, a re elaboration of the homonymous text by John of Rupeshissa, and perhaps for the above mentioned Ars Operativa Medica. In the testament I have partially edited, I could observe that Pseudo Lull certainly used the, the reasoning system of the Ars Magna Lulliana, but in an alchemical sense. This means placing among the fundamental concepts, alchemical concepts. In slide four, you can see an example of the reutilization of the Lull mechanic system in an alchemical way. I have to underline that in my research to reconstruct the tradition of the Catalan Testament with the new critical edition, I have used the two Latin manuscripts too. Uh, they have two version, version of the 15th century. First, a manuscript of Prague preserved in University Klinkovna, uh, which contains uh, a complete copy of the testamento. And the imaging uh, you can see uh, in the slide is from this. And second, a manuscript from the Vatican Library, uh, of which there is a reproduction on the internet, but it is very difficult to read. In addition, I had some uh, other example of the reutilization of the Lui mechanic system in an alchemical way taken from the manuscript I have partially edited, the manuscript Espanol 289 of the Bibliothèque Nationale de France in Paris. Uh, about the Catalan tradition of the pseudo Lulian Catalan Alchemical Testament, that is the oldest and the most important text of pseudo Lulian Alchemical Corpus, we know uh, of actually two copies. First, a Paris manuscript dated in the first half of the 16th century, all written in Catalan, selected, copied, and annotated by the Catalan blacklist alchemist John Mas. Second, an Oxford manuscript dated in the, second, in the second half of the 15th century that is trilingual, written in Latin, Anglo-Norman, and Catalan, copied by John Kirkby, uh, an English doctor of theology. In the colophon of the original Latin manuscript, Edward III of Woodstock, the Black Prince, is mentioned, and we have information about his alchemical interest and those of his mother, Queen Isabel of France, the rebel queen, especially in the preparation of medical and alchemical waters for cosmetic dietetics and for research into the elixir. A copy of the work with explicit dedication to Edward III remained in England, uh, whereas another manuscript with the same colophon, which provides evidence about the dedication to the prince, would have been um, brought to mainland uh, Europe. The, this occurred before the mid 14th century, and it then circulated in, late, in Latin and in the vernacular. After the analysis of the Paris Catalan manuscript and of the Catalan historical archives that I did for my doctoral thesis, I defend the evidence that there is a unique Catalan translation, as you can read in the right part of the slide. It is a 14th century Catalan translation that has been maintained through the two copies, Paris Mass and Oxford Kirkby and uh, that was made close to the original composition of the work dated 1332 and probably by the same Catalan author in England as I mentioned before. Specifically our, our pseudo Lull composed the original Latin work in a particular place in England possibly an alchemical laboratory, which was in St. Catherine, a royal foundation consisting of a religious community and a hospital for the impoverished uh, sick, and was uh, located next uh, uh, to the Tower of London by the River Thames. 
the presence of a Catalan alchemist at the English court in the first half of the 14th century coincides with the intensities of exchanges between the crown of Aragon and England, which uh, together with the Netherlands constitutes an important market for Catalan merchants. So the Catalan version of the Testamentum is present in the Paris manuscript in all his three parts, the Theorica, Theory, the Practica Practice, and the Libre des Mercuris, Book of Mercuris. Following a preamble, we find that the two greater parts, theoretical and practical, the theoretical part concerns the alchemy theory of the elixir. This means that we find an elaborated attempt to explain the medical alchemy conceptually. The practical part is uh, about the preparation of the elixir, also called panacea or major stone. And we find drawing derived from the theory of Ramon and uh, Lulia and the related alchemical procedures, as we have seen. The practice presents two parts. The Book of Mercury is the title of the last one. This book was also circulated in the, independently, deals with the possible application of the alchemical process with all the recipes and procedures. This Book of Mercury is full of notes on alchemical practices. To provide some example, in chapter two, the dissolving and freezing of mercury, we find a note in Jaume's end in the left margin in which he specifies the elements used in the recipe and states that he has been able to demonstrate it. Another example is in chapter four, the fixation and the perfection of mercury, where we find a pointing end in the left margin and the note. Jaume Mas confirms his result, even though he seems to be surprised by them. I thought that it seemed silly, but pa, pa, pa. looking at the part first, I have uh, at the part I have edited. I am convinced that, that uh, further exploration of the manuscript focusing on this part, the the Book of Mercury. Um, and reconstructing the practices revealed in the manuscript could shed new light on the alchemical practice of the time, practices of the time. And this could be another possibility for continuing my postdoctoral research. Good. Okay. Uh, this Catalan alchemical miscellany contains especially significant works on medical alchemy. In addition to the testament, there are another two works attributed to Ramon Llull, the Cantilena and the Aphorismes sobre l'alchimia, aphorisms about alchemy. Uh, furthermore, there is the work of John Orrupeshista, the Libre Secret in Philosophia, secret book uh, in philosophy. Um, and to conclude, the Catalan Manuscript of Paris contained the work attributed to Arnau de Villanova, the Libre de Gran Magisteri de les Preparations y Regimen de la Pedra Philosophal, Book of the Great Magisterium of the Preparations and the Regiment of the Philosopher's Stone. Another interesting aspect of my doctoral thesis that I want to bring to your attention is the study of the alchemical manuscript as a working tool of the alchemist, and not only a compilation made to meet certain intellectual interests. In fact, if we compare the Paris manuscript on the left with the Oxford one on the right, we can immediately see that the latter, uh, the latter is more elegant than the first. Jaume Mas was in fact a real practical alchemist of the Occitan Catalan school who collected the Paris manuscript for personal practical use. Therefore, he copied the works with many annotations, marginal notes of a technical nature, pointing ends, underlined passages, drawing, etc. These indications have the simple aim to clarify to itself the text or highlighting the main interesting points. What's more, I, have, uh, I observed that it must usually synthesize, synth um, synthesize uh, the, the works uh, uh, that he was copying because uh, he required them for practical application. There are also personal notes at the beginning of this of his copy introducing the testament which are not in all other manuscripts of the tradition 
These are written in 11 points by himself, another element that led me to defend that Jaume Mas was a real practical alchemist and not a simple passionate enthusiast of, uh, of knowledge and as uh, Kierkeby was. Um, Mas made a copy for himself simply because he needed it in order to practice alchemy. The characteristics uh, of the, the copied works um, uh, and the selection of brief extract from other alchemical works, as well uh, as the fact that it is uh, an autograph copy without any kind of decoration, seems to indicate that it was definitely a working copy. Kirkaby instead realized that the Oxford manuscript as a rich collectible copy rather than a simple working copy. He was in fact an English copist, doctor of theology and chaplain of the King of England. To conclude, the construction of both manuscripts reflect the social, cultural and objective differences of, of the two characters. Manuscripts that denote an interest in publishing have a great interest in the history of art because of their beauty. Uh, they present rich materials and the uh, ornamented capital letters decorated with flowers and color. The working manuscripts are fundamentals for understanding the process of the vernacularization of science and in particular of alchemy. And in the case of most manuscript of the history of Catalan language and of alchemy in Catalan lands. Therefore, we can also understand what the interests of a vernacular alchemist were. In the testament rubric of the Paris manuscript, but also in another work of the manuscript, we can read that Jaume Mas, written with the old spelling Jaume, of the town of Baga, de la Villa de Baga, began to copy the book called the Testament of Master Ramon Llull. To indicate his paper in the tradition of the work, Mas uses the word trasliada that has a double meaning in Old Catalan to copy and to translate. For this last reason, he was acknowledged in the Catalan history as a translator. Some documentary evidence, together with quite a few elements of the primitive Catalan scripta abandoned from around 1320-1330, and the copy errors, uh, together with conjunctive errors uh, with the Oxford manuscript that I have uh, detected, indicated that Mass was a copist of a previous Catalan miscellany, close to the original Latin manuscript, as I mentioned previously. Thus, uh, the manuscript copied by Jaume Mas should not be considered uh, to be uh, inferior in quality to the Oxford one, as it has been considered um, until now. The, the copist of the Oxford manuscript being English very often does not recognize the Catalan language and makes many mistakes for this reason. He also make, uh, makes copying um, errors uh, that are not uh, in the Paris manuscript. And this uh, is also why he collects a trilingual version. The fragments of a French translation that Kierkeby interpolates in his version are often present in Catalan in mass copy. The Paris manuscript also contain other passages in Catalan not included in the Oxford one. For example, an uh, encrypted writing, which is often translated into Catalan in the Paris Codex, but not in the Oxford one. You can find an overview of my doctoral project with a replacement of the miscellany in the Catalan tradition and a detailed explanation of, of the effective role of Jaume Mans in the Paris manuscript in my article, The Testament Attributed to Ramon Llull, Autograph of Jaume Mas, translation or copy of work of, uh, of a Catalan alchemist that has been published in the German editorial Reichenberger. For all this, the manuscript copied by Jaume Mas is a valuable testimony to study the activity of, a, of an alchemy, the textual tools he used, uh, and uh, um, more uh, generally, the practice of alchemy in Catalan countries and in Catalan, in particular in the first half of the 16th century. 
Thanks to the copy that I have analyzed in my thesis, I have begun work on alchemical vocabulary in Old Catalan, an especially um, valuable linguistic collection, considering that the technical vocabulary of alchemy is almost absent from historical dictionary of the Catalan language. It consists of words from the common language and uh, from uh, medical language with different meanings and uh, of unusual words with esoteric meanings reserved for disciple, disciples or initiates in the discipline. Investigating in Catalan archives, like the Biblioteca of Catalonia and the archive, uh, archive of the, the Crown of Aragon, I have been able to reconstruct a quite precise profile of Jean Mas. He was a member of a bourgeois family of the Catalan city of Baga, which is originally from the Catalan region of Alt Bergeta, as you can see in the map. This was a strategic point of accent to the Catalan region of Cerdanya, uh, where there were iron oxidores. He had, in fact, uh, documented the interest in iron mining in, in the forges and the mills of the region. And to conclude, he was the progenitor of a lineage of doctors who would, uh, would practice in Marresa and Barcelona in the 16th and 17th centuries. It is not surprising that Jaume Mas had a relationship with the family of doctors, the interest in health and the way um, it was treated had powerful attracted the bourgeoisie class uh, since, the, uh, since the 13th century. And this interest uh, presided over the alchemy of the elixir of the Paris manuscript. So to conclude, I can highlight that uh, one, uh, this research places us in an Occitan Catalan area and in a certainly mobile, middle and modern age, early modern, in which medical research along with ethics were fervent. Medical alchemy developed here for the first time in Western Europe from 12th to 16th century and that a great social diffusion from the elite to much wider social sector. The data I have collected on alchemists in this area reinforces the idea of the existence of a real school of alchemists in the region interested in wellness and health care. Second, uh, spiritual Franciscans such as Rupa Shissa wanted to approach the divine in an authentic way this movement opposite the corruption of the Roman church and was interested in the possibility of obtaining health for the poor. This would explain the interest in discovering the elixir identified with the distilled alcohol of wine. And this means a useful care although for all those who could not pay for doctors or medicines. This golden wine or fifth essence is the product of a procedure similar to that used to obtain medicinal waters, which had a large tradition in Catalonia. So numerous elements of uh, great interest have been obtained uh, from the philological and cultural analysis of the Paris manuscript, which until now had not been the subject of any detailed study. The manuscript then manifests itself to us as a working copy related to the interest of the author of the copy. The black mist alchemist Jaume Mas copied a more ancient manuscript or in Catalan for pe personal use, the unique translation of the Testamentum from uh, the 14th century close to the original Latin test uh, of uh, 1332, and probably made by the same Catalan author, Silvio Lul, has been preserved uh, in both copies, Paris Mass and Oxford Kirkeby. All these elements, um, have been useful for clarifying some problems in the reproductions in Catalan and for relocating the miscellany. Finally, I study the alchemical vocabulary in Old Catalan 
uh, of the Paris manuscript consisting of words from the common language and from medical language with different meaning and of an unusual uh, words with esoteric meanings reserved for disciple or initiate. Thank you.